From his wild antics to his unpredictable behavior, there are a lot of reasons many bands were not particularly fond of touring alongside the iconic Ozzy Osbourne. Let's take a look at some of those bands and their stories about why they did not enjoy being on the road with the Prince of Darkness himself. In 1979, singer Ronnie James Dio joined Black Sabbath, replacing the fired Ozzy Osbourne. The two vocalists were publicly known for their mutual hatred for one another and often aired out to their grievances in the media. Not long after Dio was hired, Ozzy would criticize this new version of the band, telling the press that Sabbath was now dead. In response, Dio would blast Osborne, saying, I find the man to be stupid, totally devoid of intelligence, an animal. I doubt very much Ozzy could carry a tune. Dio continued by saying, We don't bite the heads off birds, and we don't spit blood at people because we don't have to. Predictably, Dio later refused to open for Ozzy Osbourne at the last two shows of his No More Tours tour in 1992, and even quit Black Sabbath over the disagreement. While Ozzy's offer to have Sabbath open for his solo band was accepted by the other members, Dio had other ideas. He would tell guitarist Tony Iommi that he would not be supporting a clown. So on November 13th, 1992, just one evening before the Ozzy Osbourne gig, Dio made the decision to depart from Black Sabbath. Judas Priest vocalist Rob Halford had to step in at the last minute to save Sabbath, taking on vocal duties for two nights with the band. Dio spoke of the situation years later, saying, I was told in the middle of the tour that we would be opening for Ozzy in Los Angeles. And I said, no, sorry, I have more pride than that. A lot of bad things were being said from camp to camp, and it created this horrible schism. So by the band agreeing to play the shows in LA with Ozzy, that to me spelled out reunion. And that obviously meant the doom of that particular project. In 1986, a young Metallica was ecstatic to go on tour with their hero, Ozzy Osbourne. However, guitarist Kirk Hammett feared that they might get booted out of said tour due to their reckless behavior. Speaking with Gibson's icons, Hammett declared that, at that point in the band's career, touring with Ozzy Osbourne was a major opportunity for them. Aside from being a huge Black Sabbath fanboy, Hammett was also a fan of Ozzy's solo material and his late guitarist, Randy Rhodes. Hammett further revealed that Metallica's bassist Cliff Burton was a massive fan of Sabbath and that the tour had a great impact on him. It really, really meant a lot, Kirk stated. I think more to Cliff than anyone else. During sound check, Burton would play Black Sabbath riffs in the hopes of getting Osborne's attention. Eventually, his efforts paid off when Ozzy showed up on stage with a wide grin and amazed them by recognizing their musicianship. However, the tour was not without its challenges. Ozzy's wife and manager, Sharon Osborne, warned Metallica that they were never to drink around Ozzy as he was in recovery. Although they did everything they could to follow her instructions, it wasn't long before Ozzy's unpredictably wild nature caused problems for the young band. During a mid-tour pit stop, everyone hopped out of their buses, except Ozzy. A few moments later, Osborne strolled onto Metallica's bus and found Cliff Burton alone, asking Burton if they had any beer. Burton responded by telling Ozzy he was welcome to help himself to their stash. When the rest of the band got back on board the bus, Ozzy was sitting with a cold one in hand, much to the dismay of Kirk, Lars, and James. The band was certain that their immature behavior around Ozzy would land them kicked off the tour. Hammett even mysteriously stated that there were more than a few situations where Metallica thought they were going to get booted, but were not. Thankfully for Metallica, they were able to finish the tour with their idol and gained much needed experience before their rise to fame in the late 80s. Tragically, though, Cliff Burton would not live to see the next year. However, during this tour, he had the honor of playing Paranoid alongside Ozzy. Cliff had a massive smile on his face the whole time, remembers Ozzy fondly. Black Sabbath's 1978 tour with Van Halen would prove to be the beginning of the end for Ozzy Osbourne's tenure in the band. The relationship between Osbourne and his bandmates was at an all-time low and, aside from being perpetually wrecked on alcohol and other substances every night, the band was touring in support of an album that they were not proud of. What's more, they were consistently outshined at their own shows by the irresistible energy of Van Halen. During the tour, Osbourne's erratic behavior had escalated to an unprecedented level, with Ozzy often arriving late to shows or even missing them entirely. Ozzy famously went missing at the tour's stop in Nashville after a wild night with Van Halen singer David Lee Roth. When a crew member took the stage to tell audience members that Black Sabbath would have to cancel their show, the crowd began to riot, throwing their chairs, hurling trash cans from the balcony, and even attempting to set the stage curtains on fire. With Black Sabbath in a weakened state due to their interpersonal conflicts and escalating substance abuse issues, reviewers called Black Sabbath's performance tired and uninspired, a stark contrast to the youthful performance 
performance of Van Halen, who were touring the world for the first time. Shortly following the tour, Ozzy vanished once again, this time for six weeks, and left his bandmates completely in the dark about his whereabouts. Finally, the other members of Black Sabbath decided that they finally had enough of Ozzy's out-of-control behavior and fired him from the band. We just couldn't continue with Ozzy, guitarist Tony Iommi lamented. As much as everyone wanted us to, we just couldn't do it. Nothing was happening, and it would have meant the end of the band. We didn't want to fire him, but we had to if we wanted to continue. Iron Maiden and Black Sabbath co-headlined the Ozfest 2005 tour. At the time, tension had been simmering between Maiden and Osborne's camp due to disparaging remarks Iron Maiden frontman Bruce Dickinson made concerning the quality of the tour's sound system, and criticisms about Ozzy's use of a teleprompter during his performances. Furthermore, Dickinson would take to the microphone to say that Iron Maiden was not pleased with the corporate nature of the tour and the outrageous ticket prices. All of this led to a feud between Iron Maiden and the entire Osborne family. The feud reached its peak at the final show of the tour in Devore, California. The Orange County Register reported that Iron Maiden's closing set was preceded by a vocal chant of Ozzy, Ozzy, Ozzy through the speakers at the venue, presumably an invitation for people to begin screaming out Osborne's name instead of Maiden's. When Maiden finally took the stage, things got really out of hand. Not long into the performance, audience members began pelting Bruce Dickinson and his band with eggs, bottle caps, and ice. In response to this aggression, Dickinson reportedly called for the crowd to break the arms of those responsible for disrupting their show. During Iron Maiden's performance, of The Trooper, Dickinson burst onto the stage waving a British flag, like he always does when they perform this song. Suddenly, a man holding an American flag stepped out from one side of the stage wearing a t-shirt that said, Don't F with Ozzy. As if that weren't enough, at three different points in Iron Maiden's set, the power mysteriously cut off, leaving Dickinson with a silenced microphone and the band without their instruments. Infuriated by this, Dickinson accused festival organizers of purposely shutting down their performance. He further asked the audience how someone could have possibly smuggled cartons of eggs past Ozfest security, implying that the attack was a deliberate act orchestrated by people on the inside. Dickinson continued to heavily criticize Osborne from the stage, asserting that fans would never witness his band being portrayed in a reality television series, likely alluding to MTV's The Osbournes. The dispute, however, did not conclude there, as after the performance, Sharon took to the stage and declared that while she, quote, absolutely loved the rest of Iron Maiden and their crew, Dickinson was an expletive and had disrespected Ozfest since they began their stint with the tour. Her speech was met with a chorus of boos, and she quickly left the stage. The feud caused quite a bit of controversy, which spilled out into several interviews that both camps gave afterward. Ozzy would tell Howard Stern that he warned Sharon not to put Iron Maiden on the tour because they were trouble. He later stated, quote, If you've got something to talk to me about, be a man. Come say it to my face. Don't be an idiot. It's so pathetically childish. Even today, over a decade later, Bruce and the Osbournes still do not get along, with Sharon ranting in a 2022 interview that Dickinson was an a-hole who was jealous of Ozzy. Prolific rock drummer Carmine Apice toured with Ozzy Osbourne in support of Bark at the Moon in 1983. Although Ozzy had a good relationship with Carmine, Sharon absolutely detested him, to such an extent that she went out of her way to disrupt and sabotage his performances on tour. In fact, she became so hostile towards him that their strained relations eventually led to a lawsuit being filed against her by Carmine. Apice would tell the metal voice that Sharon herself called him and asked him to join Ozzy's band to replace Tommy Aldridge, whom she had just fired. He accepted her offer and negotiated a few extra benefits to be added into his contract, such as allowing Carmine to sell his own merchandise during the tour and promoting the drum masterclasses that he would hold on the road. Carmine's masterclasses were immensely successful, selling out completely and providing an extra $1,500 a day for him in profits. Unfortunately, Sharon did not share his enthusiasm for the success of his courses and proceeded to target him with harassing behavior throughout the rest of the tour. Before long, Carmine's roadie approached a piece with merch in hand, reporting that somebody had cut the head off of each and every one of his t-shirts. To top it all off, Sharon later caused a mechanical issue with Carmine's drum set. Unexpectedly, Tommy Aldridge made a sudden return just a couple of shows later, and the next day, a piece was fired from the band. Eventually, she came and said, Tommy Aldridge is taking over, recalls Carmine. I said, we've got a contract. Then she said, I guess I'll see you in court, with a real snotty face. Years later, Carmine would run into Ozzy, who through it all, never held any animosity towards the drummer. I know you and my missus have problems, but I hope we can still be friends, Ozzy said approaching with a hug. And I go, yeah, I know it's not you, a piece replied. You've heard several examples of Sharon Osbourne's malicious behavior towards other metal musicians in this video, but that's not all. There are more horror stories from other bands about their experiences with her. If you want to learn more about the other heavy metal artists that 
loathe Sharon Osbourne, click here now. You don't want to miss this.